So I, I've kind of struggled with how to introduce Corey, and I, and I say that because I go to way too many conferences, and he does too. He goes to more than I do. Um, so anyway, Corey has his own company. He travels a lot. He presents a lot. He's got one app that I use on a daily basis, or almost daily basis, called Mercury App. If you're not familiar with it, check it out. And then it's hug boards, hug plural, board, board. Hugboard.com is his latest app, but I will let him talk or mention that in more detail. Um, but with that, I'm going to turn it over to Corey Haynes, and he's going to talk about what we're doing right now. All right. Like I said, I, I just flew in from uh, Melbourne, Australia. So boy, are my arms tired. Yeah. All right. Thank you, that was my talk. Just, you've always wanted to say that. Cool, so I wanted to spend a little bit of time, <coughs> like Kobe said, I go around to a lot of conferences, and here's, I wanted to share some of the thoughts that I have that I've seen around um, what makes a conference great, not really from an organizational point of view, but from an attendee point of view. Like, what is it that you can grab um, to really make the most out of a conference that you attend. So I put this together. I actually um, was going to do this and had it all. I was, I was speaking at the RailsConf 2011, I think, and I was going to give this talk. They said, hey, would you come give you know, an intro, you know, sort of a keynote-y kind of talk? And I thought, awesome. Love starting out conferences, because I'll give a talk on how to get the most out of it. And then I forgot to tell them that that's actually what I was going to talk about. And so they scheduled me for the last day. And I thought, huh, OK. So some circumstances came together that allowed me to throw something, you know, pull, cannibalize a couple other things. And then I did a talk that I was very proud of. Um, it was a fun little, they did this great kind of 15 minute plenary session, so that was a lot of fun. But then I got asked, hey, would you give that talk at a couple places? And so I did, Kobe asked if I'd come here. I was, you know, en route from Melbourne to where I live in Chicago, so why not stop off in LA? One last hurrah of seeing the sun and actual heat before I get back. In Chicago, it's like, I don't know, minus five million degrees or something. It's like, I don't know if those of you who live in this area have ever been somewhere where when you breathe in, you feel like you possibly might die. Um, I know, I don't know a lot about biology, but I do know that my lungs have moisture in them. Not too much, because I think that's dangerous too. But the air comes into your lungs and it's just like, oh, please don't freeze up. And so every breath in Chicago in winter is, it's sort of a gamble to see whether or not you're going to make it to the next breath. But that's neither here nor there, especially because it's sunny outside. So I was thinking about this, of how to get the most out of a conference as an attendee. I always hearken back to sort of the same sort of questions with regards to software. When you're building software for somebody, when you're talking to somebody, and you're thinking about how to get value out of a piece of software, or value out of a software development process. And it really boils down to that idea of looking for what the core features are. Looking to see what's the core reason that we're here, what's the core thing that a conference actually gives you, as opposed to just sort of reading blogs, maybe listening to podcasts. And so I kind of think this is more of the title of really why are we here today, other than 
to look at some really nice cars. I've got, you know, I have a rental out there and it's a, like a Chevrolet Breeze or something. Yeah, Stephen knows what I'm talking about. It's a little bit like this one in that it has four wheels. <laughs> so it's kind of what I want to talk about. And when you go talk to people and they're like, oh, I want this and this and this for my software. I'm going to revolutionize the industry. And the same kind of should go for when you come to a conference, especially if you come to a small regional one like this. Well, not small, but perfect sized regional one. <laughs> um, so that's me. I'm Corey Haynes. Corey Haynes on Twitter, um, pretty much everywhere. My company's called Corey Haynes. Um, I do three primary things right now. I'm doing a video series called Build an App with Corey Haynes. The, uh, I like to say the incredibly appropriately named video series because we build an app and my name is Corey Haynes. So it's up on cleancoders.com. Kobe mentioned I do a, a, we're releasing a product called Hugboard which is all about, it's a virtual pin board for you to leave messages of encouragement or cheering people up or cheering them on if they're sick. Anybody leave a message for tender love during the security craziness? We, we made one and during all of the rail security stuff, he was, we'll say it was a little stressful. So we created one and people could leave messages and pictures and stuff. And then I'm sort of one of the leaders in the code retreat uh, stuff. How many people went to one of the code retreats on Wednesday or Thursday? Awesome. Very cool. If you didn't, you missed out. I also have a cat named Zach. If you've ever seen a talk or follow me on Twitter or have even remotely sort of tangentially talked to me, you've probably seen a picture of her. She's actually sick right now, so I'm, I'm a little bit sad. I'm going home tonight to see her. Um, but first, before we get into that, I'd like to continue on a little bit of what Kobe was saying. Is how many people here have been doing Ruby for, we'll say, less than six months or aren't doing it professionally? Well, there's a few there. How many, how many a year? Awesome. So everybody who's been doing it less than a year, stand up. I'm going to stand up. I'm not going to be mean. I'm not going to do anything. <clears throat> what I want to say is, everybody, look, and I want to say, welcome, because Ruby is awesome. Ru the Ruby community is a great community to join. We, you know, we're a community based around a language that has a stated goal. The stated goal of Ruby is to increase developer happiness, and that's got to be the greatest thing. And so our community also builds up around that. And I'd like to make all of the experienced Rubyists, or the people who've been here, who've been doing Ruby for a little while, look around, see the people who are just entering our community. Either they've not been programming for that long, or they're switching over from another language into what is, I'm not going to say the best community, because that always sets up rivalries, even though it is the best community. But <laughs> Pay attention, and sometime during the afternoon, during uh, the wine testing, I guess it's called, and the <laughs> food truck, go over to one of the people who are just coming in and welcome them. And, you know, ask them what they're doing, ask them what they're working on, things like that, because we really do have, our community is based on sort of bringing new, newcomers in, being very open and encouraging for people to come in. So before you guys sit down, one last embarrassing thing. I'm going to say welcome. I want everybody to clap for you guys to say welcome to here. Now you can sit down because you're stealing my thunder. So regional conferences. I go to a lot of these either because I happen to be in the city because I travel for work or I go there and talk. I like coming and just attending to them as well because they really are a great, a great way for you to get together. You meet the people who are kind of in your area. You know, there's meetups and things like that, but this is a place where we can bring, I don't know, what is it, 200 people? Roughly 200? Let me count one, 
two, three, four, 200, we'll say, because then my talk sounds great. So this is a great place of bringing 200 people from you know, probably different regions of the area, you know, different physical regions, so that you, know, you might not see these people all the time. Even if I don't know how the uh, regional meetups go, whether you have this many people come to them every time, but it's a great thing to have. These large conferences are nice. How many people have been to RailsConf recently? A couple people. It's like, I don't know, I went two years ago and it seemed like there were about 10,000 people there. It might be an order of magnitude off, but it's really a tremendously different thing. And you can get so much from these regional conferences. And a lot of it boils down to this. There's these two parts to a conference. There's talks where you sit and listen to me and other people. And then there's this hallway, hallway track of when you get to go out during lunch or in the breaks in between over by the coffee machine. And we often talk that people say, like, that's what I, re I really like that because I get to meet people. And I really look at conferences like this, where it's really about the hallway. It's really about the meeting people, talking, discussing. And then the talks are there to support that. They're there to give maybe topics of conversation. They're there to sort of let you sit down, not think as much. But the hallway track is really the core. And when we drop back to that idea of finding the core value of a conference that we go to. So, as I said, it's really all about this. I put out on Twitter a while ago and I asked for sort of recommendations. What are the most important things for people to pay attention to when they come to conferences? And I'm going to be showing some of them, but overwhelmingly everybody said this. Everybody came and said, it's meeting people. It's about that hallway. It's about sitting there at a table, you know, look around you, how many people don't you know, how many people do you know, and really just sitting down and talk. And when I was, my very first conference I went to was in 2004. It was the XP Universe conference in Calgary. And it was the last of the XP Universe conferences. They merged with the Agile conference the next year. And on the way there, I was on a bus and I decided, you know what, I am going to shake everybody's hand at this conference. There was maybe 300 people and you know, I was young, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I was like, I'm going to shake everybody's hand there. And I did. Maybe not everybody's hand. But I went there, and it's probably hard to believe for people who know me now, but I was really shy back then. I was, you know, very typical shy. I would sit off by myself. I didn't have a great ability to start conversations with people. I, I don't necessarily have that now, but, you know, I was very, very shy. And so I, would I had friends who said every time they looked over at me, I was with somebody new, shaking somebody else's hand and spent the day, the very first day, really doing that and meeting all these people. And, and it was really great because I forged a lot of found, you know, sort of foundations of relationships that to this day, you know, almost nine years later, I still get something from that. And, but being shy and being an introvert, it drained me. How many people know that feeling of when you're, you've, spent all of that time and you're, you're out trying to be outgoing. And I did what I usually do when I sort of, I always talk about how my, you know, your capacitor drains and you need to recharge it. And I did what I always do, which is go to the movie. Go sit in a dark room, recharge for the next day, because I knew there were a couple days. Sadly, it was Alien versus Predator. <laughs> so my capacitor was sort of recharged with sadness and disappointment. But, you know, at least it wasn't the uh, Star Wars prequel. Zing! Um, so, it's r coming here, I talked to people, I went out on Twitter to see what people say, and it's really, this is it, we're here to talk to each other. 
And I'm going to say a few things that, you know, over the course of it, maybe to help trigger that, give us some ideas of how to do that, especially for those of us who, who tend to be a little more shy or haven't sort of broken out, have done the natural thing of translating introversion over to shyness. And it's really this. I understand that it's super hard. You know, you, you come here with, you hope that you have some friends and you tend to stay in a pack. But you can do it if you just sort of push out with that. So just take a one second and look around at, this ta at the tables you're sitting at and just kind of notice, are the people at the table ones you know? Are they friends of yours from the area? And understand that this introversion, the, we tend to fall back on this. We tend to say, I want to have just the people around me that I know. And we tend to equate introversion, which is a common thing in our industry, with shyness. We use it almost, I don't think we use it as an excuse, but we use it as a good sort of like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm introverted. But we can break out of that. You know, it, it, introversion is the reason that I had to go sit and watch possibly one of the most disappointing movies that I've ever seen in my life because I'd waited so long to see aliens and predators fighting. <sighs> that would have been awesome. But alas, it didn't. And this shyness is something that can be overcome. This shyness is something that we all feel and, and there's times when we're low energy and we don't want to go out there, but I, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about why you're here, what sets it apart from being just reading blog posts and stuff. I don't know if you read this comic. Anybody read this comic, XKCD? Wow, everybody should have their hand up. This is a joke. <laughs> everybody should read XKCD. It's the most genius comic ever. But this one came up and it was really really perfect because it captures that feeling of standing there talking to someone you don't know. All of those thoughts that go through our head of just like, smile, smile. How often do you make a comment? Is it okay to interrupt them? And then of course the end when they start talking about, you know, my cat is sick. And it's like, stop smiling. Stop smiling, put on the sad face. You know, you are paying attention. But we don't have to be that way. You don't have to be shy. You don't have to take that introversion and move it over there. You know, tender love, he just tells it straight up. Don't be shy. There's other words in there, but they're not as important. And so I'm imploring you to take today and really push out of any feeling like you can't go to talk to people. And here's just a picture of Zach. And you look, and it's just like, is she shy? There's indeterminate animal. Why isn't she playing with indeterminate animal? That was just a gratuitous picture of Zach. So I do have a challenge that I like to give to people at conferences. When you come here, is always to meet new people. And I like to give a number. I like to tell people, you know what, go meet 10 people. Go shake 10 people's hands. It doesn't have to be everyone at the conference. But go find 10 people that you can find something in common with, even if it's just the fact that both your hands are kind of sweaty. Joe O'Brien has a great thing that he says that I've really kept as an inspiration to me, which is that you're never going to be in a room with more people who are equally as nerdy as you. I mean, everybody here is excited about the things that you're excited about, for the most part, at least one. It's not like going to, you know, your cousin's wedding, where you're, they're like, what do you do? And you're like, oh, I'm a software developer. And they're like, oh, you must be smart. <laughs> or even better, oh, man, maybe you can help me. I can't get Windows to do this thing. <laughs> and it's like, nobody can. 
you know, everybody. So one of the th one of the things along that, like Sarah, my girlfriend, and I, not too long ago, one at one evening, we we're sitting around, and it was like, hey, let's re-implement enumerable, which partially partially is kind of a humble brag because my girlfriend re-implements enumerable with me, but the other thing is that there's people here who would do that with you. And it's a rare opportunity to meet new people who would do that. Maybe it's not enumerable that you want to do, although it's super fun to implement. How many people have implemented enumerable by just like raw? Oh, I should do that. It's super fun. Super fun. Maybe this isn't the room of people equally as nerdy as me. <laughs> I'm just going to assume it is. I had a couple others probably can't read that, so I'm going to follow along with the ultimate speaker presentation advice, which is read your slides, because it's always good to do. So Liz Marlish said, you know, along the same lines, talk to people. It may be awkward, but keep trying. And the really cool thing is that you only have to meet one person to make it worthwhile. The more people you meet, the more possibility you're going to meet that one person that ends up becoming a good friend, becoming a mentor, helping you out with a problem you had. I'm trying to integrate PayPal with my app right now. Anybody ever done that? Anybody hate them? Hate PayPal? I'm reading the docs, and it's just like, it just doesn't make sense. It, just, it flat out does not make sense how PayPal, I don't even know where to go in the documentation. But I was talking to somebody at, uh, the la you know, two days ago, and I was like, yeah, and PayPal, it's insanity. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, well, here, and gave me a couple tips. And so hopefully now I can actually in integrate PayPal and get people to pay me money, which is sort of the, one of the goals. Um, in the... At, as an example of this, at the, at the conference I was talking about at XP Universe in 2004, there was a room there where it was just all computers, and there were user stories up on the wall, and it was just a bunch of computers, and it was just a hacking room, and we were, the point of the, the room was to see how far over the course of the conference we could get in implementing this game called Hunt the Wumpus. It's a wonderful text adventure, you know, back awesome days where you typed in the commands and you didn't click on things. And I wandered in there one night, and there were these two guys sitting there, and they were working on adding a feature where you could, we, they had parsing, command parsing down to where you could like shoot arrows. But I think we wanted to shoot arrows in a direction. And so I stood there and watched and was kind of, waited kind of silently, and they kept running into this problem where the parsing routine would parse, you know, the, the, the command, shoot, and then the, the object, arrow, and it would stop parsing because it had found a command that it knew. And so they were trying to figure out how to delay it and all of that stuff, and I was standing behind them, and I had an idea, so I kind of cleared my throat a little bit, you know, kind of partially hoping they didn't notice me. And then... One of them turned around, and he was like, what do you think? And I said, well, what if you parse backwards? What if you parse the command backwards? You'll catch all of the words before you try to interpret it. And other than it being an absolutely brilliant idea, <laughs> um, that's not the point of my story, one of the guys stood up, and he goes, your turn. And so I was like, ah, crap, because it was in Java, and I was a C-sharp developer, so it was all hooty tooty Java, I'm a C-sharp guy, because everyone knows C-sharp's better than Java. And so I sat down, paired with it, we got it working, it was great. And afterwards, I, you know, we introduced ourselves, and turned out that it was Micah Martin and David Chalimsky. And Micah Martin, he's got a company called Eighth Light now, he's... You know, he's part, big in the craftsmanship movement, the agile community. David Chalimsky was the maintainer of RSpec, truly an awesome, awesome guy. And so this was in almost nine years ago. And over the 
course of those years, both of them, both of them have become friends of mine. David's been a huge mentor in my style of programming. I actually was able to snap this shot where we were extreme style pair programming. That's how, you know, just a couple years later and you're, that's like symbiosis. He always, he always hates it because I say he's my soul pair. And he's like, he's like, Corey, no. I'm like, oh, it's true. So he became a really strong mentor of mine just because I was willing to sort of stretch out of my bounds a little bit, say hello to him. These are two major, major things. When I used to go to these conferences, when I worked at a, at a large enterprise, they would send like 10 people to the conference. And I would walk around and I'd see all of these people sitting there in sort of like tables per company. So like I worked for Progressive and all the Progressive people sat at a table. And I was always like, man, I see them every day. The last thing I want to do is see them at a conference. So no offense to my friends from Progressive. So always try to go sit with somebody. Look around, see, are you sitting with people that you know? You know, make a point of going out and sitting with people you don't. Pay attention to the dinner activities afterwards. You know, there's stuff, there's always stuff going on. You know, watch Twitter. You have a search set up. And above all, there's one thing that I always say, which is never, never, never. You see where this is going? Never, never, never. Never eat alone. You can eat alone any time you want. But if you've got your, you know, as we go out and we get the plates and we're standing around trying to eat, standing up with one hand free, go stand by somebody and ask them something. Eat with people you know. Stay away from it. I was at that conference, you know, I like to talk about my first conference just because there's all these things that I did that I thought, you know, I was trying to break out of my shell. And at this conference, I had this wonderful experience in that I was, it was lunchtime, and one of my friends, Lowell, he says, oh, come sit at our lunch table. And I said, you know, I sit and I'm introducing everybody, and this guy sits, the guy across the table, he goes to me and he goes, I'm Dave Thomas. And I was like, oh my God. And I looked at him, I said, your book changed my life. Who's read Pragmatic Programmer? If you haven't, you should. It's still a great book. And I said, man, you changed my life. And he looks up at me and he goes, wrong, Dave Thomas. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there trying to recover racking my brain. That's my Rubio impression, by the way. Wow, tough crowd. So I look at him and I'm like, love your square hamburgers? <laughs> and he, he looks at me and he smiles and he goes, wrong, still wrong, Dave Thomas. And I'm like, okay, okay, rack your brain, rack your brain. Oh, I loved you in Strange Brew. <laughs> still, still wrong Dave Thomas. It turns out it was this Dave Thomas. This guy, well, this guy blows my mind every time I talk to him. If you don't know this Dave Thomas, you should go around. He's, he's just this, he's amazingly smart. It turns out I was talking to one of the people that I consider a mentor, and Dave's my mentor's mentor. He told me, when I have problems, I go talk to Dave Thomas. And he's doing, he just does, he's, he's does crazy stuff. He's been around the industry for, for a long, long time. And I, I, a few years ago, maybe six years ago or so, I was sitting in a bar at the Agile conference talking to him at like two in the morning or something. And I was like, man, what is it you do? And he, he looked over at me, probably over some scotch, and he goes, Corey, 
you wouldn't even understand. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, is he's probably right at the time, of course. Now I, I'm clearly, clearly much more. No, I'm not. But he looks and he goes, he goes, you guys are all like raw, raw functional programming. He's like, it's just so cute. <laughs> he's like, we do stuff. So they do a lot of, at the time he was doing a lot of work with like vector languages and a lot of just stuff that is really, really neat. I actually made it one of my goals to learn enough so that I could go spend some time pairing with them. You know, what is it that I need to know so that I don't go there and, and be like, wow, this is so out crazy stuff. But it's, you know, you run into just by going and, you know, putting yourself out there, you meet them. And I've got the opportunity to talk to him quite a few times over the years now. And I can go with questions, and he's got, oh, he's got this great answers, great insights into what it is. I like to do this. Find somebody standing alone. It might be you, but find somebody standing alone, especially if you're standing alone. I do this all the time because I actually do spend a lot of time at conferences or something just sort of with my plate of food kind of looking around. Maybe I'm not feeling like I want to talk to a big group or something or be part of a big group, so I'm kind of standing there. But what I find is I look around, and there's a, there's a lot of people who also are standing alone. And it takes a lot less energy just to go over to somebody who's alone and chat with them and say, hey, what's going on? One thing that I like to warn people is when you're in a group, a friend of mine, Jonathan Penn, uh, gave me some advice. He said, when you're in a group, it's really intimidating, or when you see a group, it's intimidating if you see the group and there's a circle. Because you don't know them, you don't know what they're talking about. Standing outside the circle is kind of awkward. So if you find yourself in a group, make sure that there's an opening on one side, and it's not a closed circle. And at that point, anybody could even come and just be like, hey, stand there, listen. It you don't even have to participate as much. But if, you're, if it's open, it's more reasonable and it's easier for people to just sort of go stand there. When you want to talk about stuff, you know, there's all these crazy, simple questions that you can ask people. Where are you from? What are you working on? Everybody likes to talk about what they're working on unless it's like top security clearance and then, then you just get to be like, well, I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. And then, then you run into code of conduct violations at conferences and then, then it's all crazy. So be a little bit careful there. The last one is good interest. I wonder if this stretches to the back. All speakers should have a cat because when you're not giving a presentation, the laser pointer is wonderful for cats. Where's it going? Okay. Speaking of which, if you can't think of anything else to talk about, there's always a fail-safe topic. My cat. You can talk, and I mean, just think what great conversations you could have. You could say, like, what is she doing? Is she going raw? Is she yawning? <sighs> Who knows? But you can always talk about her. It's okay. I give you permission. Don't be afraid to just listen. Rachel Howard, who's a friend of mine, says just kind of go and listen to conversations. That's, you know, you see a cr group open up, just kind of go and stand out there, stand at the edge, listen to what they're saying. You don't always have to be an active participant in it. You know, and when you're going to the talks, you know, I've been talking a lot about the people, but of course we come to these and there are talks the talks, think of them as conversation starters. They're really topics that you can then go and say, hey, what do you think about, you know, what do you think about Goliath or something like that? You know, don't have your computer open, sorry. <laughs> my favorite, uh, one of my, I won't even tell that story, that's not that much fun. But, you know, try to keep during the talks, paying attention to it. You know, if you have something that you need to do, it's nice, it's okay to like kind of move out 
you know, go out into the lobby and work on the stuff you have to do. There's all these speakers around, all these great people. I get nervous when I come to these because a lot of the speakers are people that I've looked up to. And coming to a place and going, oh, I, where are they? You know, I, I, are they, do they want to talk to me? Which is odd because this is my clout score for cats. <laughs> and I'm pretty high up there. This is my LinkedIn score for cats. It's pretty high up there. I shouldn't get nervous, but I do. And it's okay. We'll skip the thing about Coco Chanel. Coco Chanel's a good person to talk to as well. You know, t think about that. Go up right after the talk. Go find somebody who's standing there by themselves and ask them what they thought about it. Participate. You know, birds of feathers sessions are fun. Lightning talk. Do we have lightning talks here? Okay, no lightning talks here. Don't participate in those here. But <laughs> go do them. Coding activities. I've, one of the things with David Chalimsky that I got to know him so well is that every time I saw him at conference, he would be programming working on our spec. And I'd always ask, what you doing? And he'd say, sit down. And we'd code together, which is the very first Ruby I ever wrote was our spec, because I would sit down and see what he was doing. You know, participate after the day is done, go out there. I was at a conference called Code Mash and playing guitar, and this guy sits down next to me, plays guitar, we're having a good time singing and all of that. And then the next day, I go to a talk on how Rake was made. And, oh my God, last night I played guitar with Jim Wyrick. I didn't know who he was at the time. And it was, the after activities are really, you know, they're easy, they're smooth, going through. Avoid the GitHub hangover. If you, when you go out tonight, you know, it's, it's, it's probably good to pay attention to how much you drink. I went out last night. Um, for a thing, and it, I think the bill came to like $10,000, which luckily GitHub was paying for it. But don't do that, because then you end up like this, like Gary, goes to bed at 2, wakes up at 11, and makes it to the conference for lunch. You know, it's just okay if you want. If you know Gary, that makes sense. One of the big things is after the track is done, Keep in touch with the people. Get email addresses, get Twitter accounts, send, it to, send to them a, within a couple days and really talk about that. Like, present your thoughts. Write down what your thoughts are. Take notes as though you're going to have to give a presentation on it. Do, 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 do. So, there really are about meeting meetups. The people you meet here, you'll probably see at other conferences. You'll start seeing at other meetups. I always saw David Chalimsky and always sat down with him when asked what he was working on and we ended up pairing together. So, not to hold you guys for very much longer before lunch, but I'd like to end with doing this. I'd like to end with just a small activity before we go out there and have this challenge for you for the rest of the day, starting now, is I really would love for you to meet 10 people. I like having a number there because then you can say that I succeeded. Go find people, ask what's your name, what are you working on? If all else fails, you can just say, Corey says for me to ask you what's your favorite gem. <laughs> and then everybody laughs because you know that I told you to say that and so it breaks that ice. Go find out what of, you know, find 10 people and ask them. Is there a gem that you've kind of been turned on by lately? Because it's super cool. So what I'd like you to do is everybody stand up for a second. Don't talk yet. And before we go out to lunch, I'd like you to turn and m shake hands, meet, find the person's name of three people around you who you don't know that you don't know before, and then we'll have lunch.